As early as the 1700s, Spanish conquistadors exploited the rugged, high-altitude desert mountains of the Andes for its precious metals. Today, resource-rich Peru is one of the world's largest copper producers. Demand for copper is, is obviously a fluctuating market. It's based on the, the use of copper, which is derived out of the emerging markets. All the electronics goods, cars, increase in communication, the future markets for copper are seen as very strong. Cerverde is the largest grassroots copper concentrator ever built at 240,000 tons a day. One of the challenges in building and managing a project like Cerverde is the limit of resources you have in country. That's one of the main reasons we went to Fleur to construct this project. They had the experience of building Cerverde 1 here very successfully, and Fleur was the obvious choice. The Cerverde concentrator is the largest one-time built concentrator in the world. The concentrator triples production at the mine. We're producing a copper sulfide concentrate and a moly sulfide concentrate. We'll produce 1.8 million pounds of copper per day, as well as about 40,000 pounds of moly. This concentrator also uses the HPGR technology. The HPGRs are much more energy efficient and they're less susceptible to variations in feed. The concentrator consists of basically two areas. We call the dry side and the wet side. The dry side is essentially comminution. This is where we reduce the large rocks down to fine particles and we grind this material to a point where the copper and the, and the sulfide minerals are liberated from the rock. We have single stage ball milling, six stages of it, and six individual rows of, of rougher flotation to produce a, a copper and moly bulk concentrate. From the rougher circuit, we take the concentrate we regrind it, we run it through a couple of cleaner circuits and produce a final copper moly concentrate, which we ship off site to Japan for smelting. Fleur's scope on this project was to provide engineering services for the concentrator. We were fully responsible for all of procurement activities. All of the equipment and material uh, was specified by Fleur, the contract administration, construction management, and commissioning of the entire facility. There was a requirement by the client to engage and hire 50% local talent out of the Air Keeper region. The workforce on the Cerberty project peaked at about 15,000 people, around 9,000 direct workers. These people were unskilled. They were not used to uh, heavy industrial projects. This is a project that did not have a construction camp. We utilized almost all the available buses in Peru to transport the workers up and down from the mine back to the city every day. We've done a great job of really mentoring, coaching, and looking after these inexperienced workers and, and getting them up to speed. And they leave this project with the skill sets to go forward and advance their careers. Throughout the project, we have had many safety campaigns to try and keep safety always at the front of everyone's mind and to think of different ways of, of teaching. We're very proud of our safety record. We're very proud of, of having won the President's Award last year. Going out, walking site every day, we see safety in practice every day, every moment. We're proud of this entire project. It's really when you're under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure that you see people come together. The team has been a great team to work with, great professionals from all around the world uh, working towards one goal. It's a tremendous benefit to the Freeport organization to be able to execute a mega project according to plan, bring it in on schedule and on budget. We started this project well over five years ago. The concept at the beginning of the project was it was going to be a one team effort with Freeport and the Cerverty operations people. We achieved that. We did this together, it's a success that everyone can share in.